Okay. January 2013, core two paper. Yeah. Question one. Um, uh, so, the, the nice, nice start with just some trigonometry. The triangle, we've got two sides marked and we've got an angle. Um, if we've got two sides and an angle, what are we going to use? The sine rule. Why are we using the sine rule and not the cosine rule for this? Because the angle is going to be two sides. Okay, and mm -hmm. we're wanting to find an angle. That's, that's the key thing. That as soon as we get two angles involved, there's going to be the sine rule rather than the cosine rule. You're always dealing with, well, this is the angle that we want to find. With the sine rule, you're dealing with an angle and the side opposite it. So we can set this up quite nicely because that's what we've got. We're going to say that the sine of A over 10 is the sine of 14, sorry, the sine of 63, that's a good start, over 14. We're going to rearrange that to get sine A on its own. Sine A is 10 sine 63 over 14. We're going to use the calculator to evaluate that and then do it the sine. We don't need to do anything else with it because it's, uh, it will be we're pretty sure it's going to be an acute angle, so we don't have to worry about other values. That gives us, if we do inverse sine of that value there, it gives us what we need to 39.5 degrees to three significant figures. As we start off, we remember it says on the front of the paper, give all non exact answers to three significant figures. So we're going to be consistent about doing that. Um, part two. Now this was really interesting marking this for you lot because uh, uh, lots of you did this a way that I wouldn't have done it. Lots of you um, worked quite hard to rearrange things to get it to use the sign rule. <coughs> did it again with the sign rule. And that took a bit of doing to, to kind of figure things out from the triangle. If, if we're wanting to find the length AB, that's the length there, which we should mark as C. Now, the thing that, that jumps out at this to me is that if we've got that angle given, and we've just found that angle, then that angle we can find quite nicely. And as soon as we have, uh, we want to find the side opposite an angle that we know, and we've got the two sides that are adjacent to that angle, that's a clear cosine rule thing, isn't it? You can use the sine rule if you want to for this again, but it, it really sort of leaps out the page as being a cosine rule thing. So I set this up as being, well, I mean, the first thing to do is to work out that angle C, isn't it? And the, the angle that you've got there, um, the angle that, that we, is at C would be 180. Take away the, the, the one that was given and the one that we just found out, and to, you plus that, isn't it? And we're going we're gonna to use our, our saved figure for that, we're going to use the full version of it, just to make sure we don't introduce any rounding errors. This is 77.47, where we calculate that. And so now we can use the cosine rule and say that AB squared is 14 squared, it's 10 squared, remember, it's, uh, it's this one squared, it's that squared, it's that squared, minus twice 14 times 10 times cos of c. So minus twice 14 times 10 times cos 77.47. If we do that and square root it, we get that AB is 15.3 centimetres. Again, the three centimetres figures. It's just about being careful with the calculator. Cosine rule, of course, is given to you on the formula sheet, isn't it? So you just read that straight up. Those of you who did it with the sine rule, that was absolutely fine. <coughs> but I think the cosine rule is more than obvious to do. Great. That was a good start. Thanks, Dom. You need to press stop on the thing now. So just